Okay, thank you for this uh, really nice, uh, really nice presentation. Um, yeah, I'm Jan from Germany, and the next, uh, the next guest we are going to have here is uh, Miguel Barrios, uh, System Engineer Director at Aris, Arista. Are you around? Yes, I am. Buenos dias. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Welcome here. Uh, very nice to have you here. Um, a, a great pleasure to have you have you talking, and um, we're looking forward for a very very nice uh, presentation about uh, ready to consume network automation and quality telemetry uh, using ML. And Miguel, are you ready to start? Yes. Should I should I yes. start sharing? Yes. Please start start sharing, and okay. see you see you in a while. Thank you. Okay, so I hope everybody can see my screen. Uh, so my name is Miguel Barreiros. I'm the technical director of EMEA, uh, responsible pre and post sales. I'm based in Paris. I speak Castellan, but my own dicho que el inglés es mejor, vale? And uh, I have worked with machine learning and telemetry for close to 20 years now. Uh, well, 20 years ago, I was doing neural networks. That's the old school name for deep learning. And then I worked a lot with quality of service, but then I moved to a networking vendor, right? Where I've been staying a lot. So I guess that's the key question is that this is a DevOps, um, this is a DevOps forum. And you have here a list of networks and we are not, we don't sell virtualization. We don't sell servers or bare metal containers or whatnot. So why are we here, so to speak, right? So the organization felt it was interesting to provide a perspective of a network vendor. So uh, as an example, if this morning or any day of the week you are using Microsoft Azure, they are number one customer in our public reference, at the end, your data is crossing most likely a list of gear, right? You are not aware of it, which is a good thing, obviously, because you should not care. But uh, we felt it would be interesting to present a different perspective, not of people who build applications, uh, but rather of the people who uh, build these huge pipelines for data transmission. Right? So this is obviously not a sales pitch because, well, you, uh, we are in different worlds. But nevertheless, I believe it would be an interesting uh, sharing experience from a networking vendor. So, uh, as you know, there are two titles in my presentation, the ready to consume network automation and the quality telemetry data for machine learning. But all of these are byproducts of a modern networking operating system. So that's where I'm going to start my conversation. What is mandatory for a modern networking operating system? and the two very good byproducts you get out of it, which is ready to consume network automation and quality telemetry or quality data that you can apply for machine learning, right? So moving on, just a very quick introduction to Arista because maybe not everybody here is, since it's a DevOps forum, is familiar with Arista. So we were uh, founded in 2008, 13 years old. We have been recognized a lot across uh, all these public uh, institutes or public references. Uh, we are the market leaders in 100 gig interfaces and if, well, you have all the numbers in the slides, but to start unveiling what is behind uh, modern uh, operating systems is that, well, we only have one. Right? So this is the first hint, so to speak, about the network, uh, about what is a modern operating system. As we can see, it's something that can take many shapes, many forms, exist in multiple domains, and it's always the same networking operating system. So just a bit more of background on Arista. So Arista started on low latency switching, uh, cloud titans, then data center, and we kept on growing. Today, we work with uh, campus networks, service providers, and so on. But back to the DevOps topic, so the first, sorry, oops, sorry, a bit jumpy. So the first part about the modern operating system is that, well, networking operating system 
is that it's the same one independently of where you want to use it. Right? So it's a bit follows the same principle as an app, right? You should build your apps that if you are deploying in Cloud Titan 1 or in Cloud Titan 2, they, are, they should be the same, right? You don't need to rewrite things whenever you change environment. Networking operating systems, the modern ones follow the exact same principle. So we at least have one operating system that floats across many, many use cases and it remains the same, which is obviously very important for large scale. And the fact that you know, Cloud Titan 1 or Cloud Titan 2 might have different requirements, but they are allowed that in their data pipelines, they can use the exact same operating system. Uh, it's also important as we'll see for the automation part, right? because the same operating system means the same API, right? So if you have code interacting with a network OS API, that code does not change as the use case changes. Right? The second point is uh, it should remain the same independently of the form factor. Right? So it's a bit like when you build apps, if the app is in a virtual machine or in a container, right? Uh, your core code does not change, right? So whatever is the form factor where you deliver it, the core components and the core functionalities remain the same. So, and this also ties into the automation part, right? Because when you have all these API driven behaviors of people trying to interact with the network components, or you just want to plug the network into some sort of CI CD pipeline, or any automation workflow, it's important to have consistency, right? So you might want a router or a switch on a VM, you might want it on a container, or you might actually want the physical thing, right? But the models regarding how you interact with such different form factors should always remain the same, right? This is also very important for us, it's also something where I believe the DevOps world and the networking world, let's call them like that, share a lot in common, right? The modern OS should be able to span across multiple form factors because it's always the same OS, right? What just changes is the form factor. Being in a physical box or a bare metal, a VM or a container should exactly be the same thing. The next point is the uh, state driven. This is something that in the networks today, which I have to admit my ignorance, I don't know if the DevOps world is the same thing, but state driven is key. Right? So there's always that joke that, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So whatever was developed in the 80s and 90s should stay in the 80s and the 90s, right? So on the left hand side, that's how network operating systems used to be built which is you have tons of boxes in a monolithic system, typically some sort of Unix BSD or something similar. And when you want to take a box out, you need to erase all the arrows. If you want to put a new box in, a new brown box, then, well, you need to put it there and discover to whom you should need to talk to and build uh, the arrow system, which just creates a gigantic ball of spaghetti. Now, a state-driven uh, networking operating system has at its core a network database. Right? If you think about it for a second, it almost feels a bit weird, but it's the reality. Uh, the core component of a modern networking operating system is a database. That's the core. Right? Where you have all these people around it talking to it, uh, either getting notifications or publishing state, but it is a database. Right? And this is super important because if you want to take something out, you just cut the tie to the database. If you want to add something in, well, you just place it there and add a link to the database, right? So it's not a spaghetti. A sp enables for quality data or uh, for machine learning, right? Because the core is a database, so telemetry is not an add-on, right? 
So if you look at the networking OS world, a lot has changed the last 20, 30 years, right? But it's crystal clear that state-driven architectures based on open Linux and merchant silicon are the way forward. If you need a physical box, it will be merchant silicon. Otherwise, it will be a VM or a container. But it's always, should always be the same operating system, uh, which at its core is a database, right? So it's completely state driven, right? Uh, the other component is obviously quality, right? So uh, in the network, people usually talk a lot about features, like firewall features. Let's stop customer A talking to customer B. I know that people who develop apps, this is completely transparent as it should be, obviously, right? People are developing apps, they are not configuring the network. But there's a lot of conversations regarding uh, security rules, uh, host-based segmentation. Should we have a firewall API provider? Should we have host-based segmentation, like a little tiny firewall in a very oversimplified manner, living on the VM itself? But the key point is always amount of security that you have on the devices themselves, right? So all those devices that your apps cross in a transparent way for people using and building apps need to be secure. And this is something that's completely transparent as it should be to people building and using apps, but it's a core component and a core concern of people building networks, obviously. So, the last thing uh, is about the open ecosystems, right? Uh, the automation world uh, regarding the network itself, and I believe from a DevOps perspective on the server app side is similar. Uh, it's all about open ecosystems, right? So we are thankfully done with the black box syndrome where people just throw packets at a black, uh, black box and, you know, just wished things, nice things would come out at the other end, right? More and more on the networking world, I believe it's the same analogy applies to the DevOps world. Uh, we have the concept of open systems, open ecosystems, right? So it's not a black boxes that nobody really knows what they actually do. And then you need a black boxes manager because since nobody understands the black boxes, you need to buy the black boxes manager. Right? Accessibility and telemetry are the two key trends on the networking world right now. And well, what I'm showing here is basically the skeleton of uh, our a modern operating system, in our case, Arista EOS, right? So at the core, you have NetDB, it's all state driven. You expose via open config or via APIs, all these clients, that people can just connect directly to the box, right? And all these APIs are documented, open config, that's a standard. And it allows you to have a real state, a real time state streaming, right? So, and you'll see how crucial this is for the machine learning world in the networking, right? It's the fact that because the core component is a database in a nutshell, everything on that database can be streamed in real time to clients, right? And that's incredibly important because it means that every single variable of the network, every single in the sense that, well, what happens if I have 10 million variables? Then you need to know the state of 10 million variables. Or you may not want to know the state, but you should always get the data, right? And each, they can be streamed in real time to either Cloud Vision, which is just a, a management system, or to open source tools. So Garfana, particularly, it's gaining a lot of popularity regarding open telemetry systems, which in a nutshell, in the networking world, are just a way to say that I'm going to use open source. I'll get real time notifications about the state of every single networking variable. And I'm going to build my graphs or my stats based on that. Right? So the key trend in the networking world is definitely open ecosystems. Right? So you can look at what's under the hood, what's the skeleton 
of the operating systems. You know you have all the tools to interact with it, not via the CLI, obviously, but all these tools to interact with it in an automated manner, and you can get every single piece of information in real time out of it. Right? And obviously, as you're going to see, this has got a huge importance due to CI CD pipelines. Right? So, in the summary, I mean, the networking world trends regarding networking OSs are uh, they have to be independent of location and use case, they have to be independent of the form factor. Uh, state driven architecture is crucial because it connects to the telemetry, the extensibility, and also the open ecosystems concept. Now back to whatever was done in the 80s and the 90s, let's leave it there. Security and stability, those are super crucial. And number five, obviously an open architecture. So with this, I hope I made to the DevOps audience, uh, I should say clear, uh, or at least interesting, what the networking trends are regarding the operating systems. Now I'm going to deep dive a bit into my next topic that is a byproduct of having a modern OS, which is how do networking people build ready to consume network automation. Right? So if you look at, you know, the automation has been a hot topic for the last time, 10, 12 years, right? But the reality is that, you know, automation always existed, right? So I don't know, in 2002, when I was making Perl scripts using a package called net telnet, that went to the boxes and grabbed the configuration of the switches and routers and did a backup. Well, that is automation in a certain way, right? Uh, or shell scripts or expect scripts, right? Okay, but I mean, what this has changed dramatically over the last few years is obviously that now we have frameworks and languages that were built with the sole purpose of automating networks, right? which obviously opens a world of possibilities, but in parallel also a world of complexity. Right? So if you just use a Python script to do an SSH to a box and do a show command, if you go to Stack Overflow, even if you don't know Python, it probably takes five minutes to get it done, right? Just some copy paste and so on, it's done. Now, these tools that today we have are super powerful, but they are also the price to pay that they are complicated, or at least they are more complex than just doing uh, 25 lines Python script. Right? So what do we have today, right? We have the documentation, we have these super, super powerful tools and capabilities, but the first step of the automation process is always, you know, develop your template and develop a validation script. And the validation is important because, you know, you can read documentation, you can know how to automate it, but, you know, is, the, is what you are doing a validated design or not? Right? That is a key question. It's a bit that we need to move from this tag of it's easy to automate to here is the automation component itself. Right? And this cannot be in the networking world. We cannot give people uh, all the tools, but then it's do it yourself from scratch. Or here are the services offering you need to buy to get it going. Right? Uh, as I usually say, you know, if, if you have an easy solution, but you have five, six, 10 people from the vendor on site every day, well, maybe it's not that easy anymore. Right? So the goal, the trend in the networking world is in a nutshell to deliver ready to consume uh, automation frameworks. Right? So I'll give an example of on machine learning. So this is my favorite machine learning book, right? where obviously it's open ecosystem. So it's available on GitHub, right? So all I have to do is issue a git clone command and it's mine. It's GitHub, so I can contribute GitHub or any other open source framework. So I can contribute to it. I have all the documentation and code 
regarding to achieve A, this is the code to do it. And the documentation regarding why doing A is a good thing. So with this framework, I have something which is ready to be used. It has been validated in this case by the author of this book. I have blurred it so people don't think I'm doing advertising. Uh, but in a nutshell, all of this is one Git clone away from me. Right? And I have the Jupyter notebooks with all the Python code using the scikit uh, libraries. And I can just do a Git clone and it's mine. Right? I can do it if uh, I want to use a different variables. All I have to do is change the variables file. And that's all it takes. Right? And this is exactly the same thing that we want and we need in the networking world. And that's where we need to move away from, it's very easy to automate. Here is the 25 tools you can use. Here is a 35 gigabytes worth of documentation. Two things that you can actually use without having to be a super guru software developer. Is the, I think the open source world and the open ecosystems are a marvelous thing. Because it allows people, in this case on machine learning, my favorite machine learning book, but it allows people to have this experience. So what we have done, uh, this is an Arista example, but I mean, it just serves the purpose to a DevOps community <laughs> to explain how are people in the networking world doing it. We have created something we call AVD, which stands for Arista Validated Design, which in a nutshell is a framework Right, where you can just do a git clone and it's yours to provide all the code, all the documentation, and it's based on uh, validated designs. Right, so you know you are doing the right thing because you are doing the exact same thing that the vendor is doing to configure their network devices when they are doing a greenfield, as an example. Right? It is this user experience that is crucial as opposed to we can do all this funky stuff here are the apis but you know either hire services from a vendor or hire software developers right? which in a devops world is a lot easier because there's a lot of a stronger devops uh, software development uh, community and skills but on the automation world it's a bit different and so why i believe it's interesting to a devops community to explain a bit uh, the challenges in the networking world. So this is the, the framework itself uh, that obviously we have a standard runner supported on Docker. Uh, we have a community behind it, which is us and anybody else's who uses these configuration templates. It is licensed using the Apache license. So once you do a Git clone, it's yours to use it and modify it as you see fit. And well, we have other components that I'm not going to deep dive into them, uh, but in a nutshell, it has got to be a framework, right? And more than just configuration templates. And the outcome options is that you do a Git clone, you add your ecosystem variables, so a bit like to the analogy of the machine learning book. Uh, if I don't like the data sets that machine learning book, the examples are, I can just modify them. Exactly the same thing here. All I have to do is change the ecosystem variables and you get the configuration templates. Another thing that is a very, very hot topic at the moment in the networking world is obviously continuous integration. And more and more uh, people in the networking world demand and desire uh, plugins that you can stuck in directly into a CI CD pipeline. Right? And this is what, you know, in the networking world, this I would say on the automation front, it's hot topic number one. Not sure. Not sure about the DevOps, how things are done, but this is from the networking world perspective. Okay, so. My last topic, I think I still have 15 minutes, sorry. Uh, it's quality data or telemetry for machine learning, right? So there have been lots of talks about machine learning. It's a hot topic. Uh, I have personally worked with it, uh, but it was 20 years ago. 
<laughs> when I work with neural networks for speech recognition, uh, neural networks, it's uh, well, it's today called the deep learning, right? But you know, machine learning has got one good thing in terms of uh, its needs are completely horizontal to DevOps, networking, whatever it is the, the use case, right? Which you need to have representative quality data because the logic of the model is done or is achieved by using the data to train and validate the model. So in a nutshell, and this is the corollary number one of machine learning world is garbage in, garbage out. Right? So if you throw garbage in at a machine learning algorithm, you train the model and validating it with garbage, garbage is in bad data, so you're going to get garbage out. Right? And this is why representative and quality data is so important. If you look at the industry, there is a reason why decision trees are so popular, right? Because decision trees offer a very good balance regarding how much data you need and how much uh, training uh, you need to, do, to perform, as opposed to deep learning, which depending on the scenario, it's not really a fair generalization, but I'll still use it. Deep learning is a lot more powerful, right? But it requires huge amount of data. So the first point is that you need to have uh, data that matches reality. The second point is that you need to have huge, huge amounts of data, right? Uh, the other two, processing and memory, 20 years ago, this was a big, big challenge. Today, not really, not really at all. Right? So why is data in real time so important, right? So in the networking world, this is how things are being done, is that you have data streamed, you have a time series database, right? And uh, then you split the data into a training set, a testing set to train and validate the model, and you, might, you go into production, right? Now, the real time part is crucial because you need to have the exact match of the reality. So if you are doing polling, sampling, or anything asynchronous, I mean, we can play with semantics all we want, but basically it's called a synchronous mode, right? There are things that you are going to miss from reality. So what you're going to feed into your time series database is not reality, it's actually incorrect data, right? So this is a purely academic example, obviously where you just have a red dot that you missed, right? But does not match reality, so you're training and validating the model with incorrect data, which goes back to the garbage in, garbage out machine learning corollary, right? This is why in the networking world, and I believe this holds true, I have worked on the app side of machine learning, or two, that was 20 years ago, uh, but I believe on the machine learning, the quality of the data uh, is vital. Without it, you cannot do anything. And then the second point is how much data can you get? And that typically places a constraint regarding, well, can I use decision trees? Can I use deep learning? But the first step, it's always, can I get quality data or not? So doing some research, I actually found a point that I think will be interesting for a DevOps community, an example which is how Netflix detects uh, poorly behaved uh, networking elements. Right? So if you have a switch, a server, a router that goes down, it's incredibly easy to understand where is the problem because oh, actually a network element went down. Right? So that's easy to spot. Right? Now, the problem is when you have something that does not go down, but compromises the overall quality of the network. Right? And this is very interesting to see, well, to share how people are doing it, right? So just a very quick mathematical introduction. So this is uh, done using DB scan, which is basically a clustering algorithm. So it's an unsupervised learning. So you just send all the data and the algorithm builds clusters of data, right? Where the outliers are the exceptions that sit in a cluster outside the other cluster. Sorry, that was very quick and dirty. But you know, back to the main topic here. 
the the reason well the the way this works is that all this data that i'm highlighting here is captured in real time right so you have reality here right then you can apply this reality to the machine learning algorithm because you trust this data this is in real time right and then you can identify who are the outlier right so if you have a server in the networking world or a switch or a router if you are able to stream all the data from it in real time, meaning you are 100% confident that the data you have match reality, you can use these clustering algorithms that in a nutshell allows you to split the, well, to identify who are the outliers. This is an example for servers, but obviously the exact same logic applies to switches, to routers, to whatever networking element. But the key premise is always you need to have quality data. Uh, the other thing that we are seeing in the networking world, which is getting very, very interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, is the time series databases, and you have certain cloud titans, in this case, Facebook, are starting to, to publish uh, toolkits to, to work with this, with this type of topics. This is also vital, right? Because 20 years ago, when I worked in machine learning, it was very tough because you had to do everything in C programming language. You had to do memory allocation, then it core dumps, and then you need to troubleshoot the core dump, and it's a pain. Today, it's super, super easy to play with machine learning, right? You have these super powerful libraries like Scikit for Python and so on that makes this a lot easier, right? Time series database for the networking world are vital. Right? I'm not sure how it works in the DevOps world, but networking are very, how should I say, very volatile regarding information. It's a constant flow of information, right? You might have thousands of network nodes out there between switches, routers, and servers. So there is a giant influx of information. And the only way where you can store it is obviously on a time series database because it allows you to go back in time and check, well, what have, what was the status of these 3,000 network elements six months ago, right? So it's very exciting worlds for machine learning time series database. Now that even, well, let's say cloud titans are starting to publish tools to work with it. Uh, and also it's because it's becoming incredibly easier to work with machine learning in networking world. All you need to do is have all the data, all in real time, and being able to store it. Right? With that, you have a data set that's an exact match of reality, then you can play with the models, obviously. Right? So how does this work on the networking side? Right? How can you have, I don't know, thousands or tens of thousands of nodes streaming in real time? Right? In a nutshell, you need a state architecture which comes back to point number one of, the, of this presentation, right? So you have a database in the middle, which is publishing the data in real time to an agent, and the agent simply streams it, right? Uh, it is vital in this open ecosystems world we live in that this real-time streaming has, can be directed to either a vendor tool or to an open source tool, right? And when I say or, it has to be a complete or, right? In the sense that the same data that is streamed to a vendor tool is exactly the same data that is streamed to an open source tool, right? So you can never lose information. So what are the trends? Uh, obviously, you must have all the data without exceptions. Without it, machine learning is seriously, seriously compromised, right? You, uh, you need to have a state-driven architecture uh, because you cannot have a penalty, which are, it's my next slide. Telemetry must be a core component. It's not something you plug in later and then plug in all the wires. It's no, it has to be a core component since day one, right? And number three, which is something I believe it's a trend, a very important one in the networking world is open, to, open systems, open ecosystems, right? Customers should always be able to choose between I'll use a vendor system 
or I can build my own, just stream the data to me. No lock-in whatsoever. So the importance of having telemetry as a core component is that you cannot pay penalties. There should never be a price to pay regarding how much data you stream. You need all the data. You cannot reach a point where basically you'll fry the CPU or the virtual resources assigned to something because you want to get all the data out. Right? That is not acceptable. Right? And that's where state streaming has really changed the game in the networking world, right? Because you just stream data. Right? The difference in terms of the, perf the, the performance you need to have to stream one variable or 10 million should be exactly the same one. Right? Uh, and this is, this is another example that what was made in the 80s and 90s should stay there, right? When I started working networking, we had this thing about SNMP, which I believe will relate to some of people in DevOps world, which is like every five minutes you, you ping the box and you get the, the data out of it, right? So if something happens in those five minutes intervals, you just missed it, right? So, and that, simply kills machine learning, right? And people don't do five minutes because they want to, right? They do five minutes because if it's not a state-driven architecture, there is a tax to pay, right? Because if you want to do it every second, then you fry the CPU. Right? So with that, I believe I'm five minutes ahead of time and I'd like to open up for any questions. Yes, no. I just uh, I just I just uh, checked the ch uh, chat for you. Uh, there are no open questions, but uh, for me, it would be quite interesting to know. Uh, so, how you realize having CPU streams or data streams being not consuming much CPU? Is that like uh, something that yeah. came up recently? No, it has been uh, the background of Arista is actually with the Cloud Titans where scale goes to different levels. So you're talking about tens of thousands of boxes and state driven is, well, it's mandatory for them as it's mandatory for any customer these days. It all has got to do with scale. Okay. Well, I mean, I would just like to say if there are no more questions during the session, I'm happy to unplug. My email address is published in my slides and I'm fully available to any follow-up via email. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for the opportunity to present. Thank you really much. It was an interesting talk. It was nice to see which challenges we can face next in our new cloud environments and everything we can do with AI and ops and ML. Sounds like something very interesting and yeah. Thank you really much. Thank you.